Hello. Uh, so my presentation will be about uh, designing the workplace in the age of algorithms and machine learning. So this, uh, I will show a couple of projects that, that kind of demonstrate our interest in data gathering and also in a, in a subsequent use uh, of the data within, uh, within our design process. So this is a page that kind of summarizes well how we operate nowadays. Like you can tell that everyone will have a very different uh, Netflix suggestion on its page because the, the obviously there is so much data about us that our digital twin already knows wha what movies we uh, tend, to, uh, tend to like and, wha and they can do uh, suggestions for us, which is, I mean, uh, advertising companies are skillfully using that. So obviously there is an advantage of gata, data gathering. And we can also, it's not only al about our virtual behavior, but we could also map our physical behavior. So there is tools that kind of, that can uh, analyze crowds, can predict certain behavior of people. So this is all about uh, gathering data about our physical behavior. So, I mean, this, this, this graph basically shows the life cycle of a building. We spend about 1% on the construction cost, 9% on the, on the operating cost, but 90% on the salary cost for the people that actually uh, that work in the, in, in, in the office building. So we basically to also kind of divert clients' attention from, this, uh, from the 1% cost, we sort of take a certain interest in the 90%. And how we do it, we kind of believe that uh, that to help people being more productive, I think one of the key words is obviously a collaboration. So we find new ways how to foster collaboration. We want to build transparent environments where kind of people do collaborate and where they're creative. And obviously they need to feel well while doing that. So, so we started with a kind of simple algorithms of, of checking connectivity within kind of y y you know, very generic place. And that sort of generates certain heat maps where we can see that what are actually the most collaborative desks, where is the less collaboration, and then the least collaborative spaces are here. So for example, is it where the boss is going to sit? So there are other parameters that we're interested in. So visibility, daylight, reachability, that has something to do with the physical connections, and etc. So we kind of combine them and then we uh, we create analytic tools that kind of give us an insight of what kind of out of, of a number of iterations. I think there's millions of, of possible iterations. So we kind of run those tests to actually help us with the, with the early design. So that way we actually able to predict performance of certain buildings uh, on a very early design stage, right? So, uh, and that I think as a result of that, we kind of figure out that there is the, the notion of voids within buildings and, and giant atria are actually uh, vehicles that they really enhance what, what, I've, uh, what I've mentioned previously, which is the transparency and collaboration, right? Because there's much more connectivity and there is a transparency. So this is a building that we're opening actually in three weeks in, uh, in Beijing. It's the world's largest atrium, it's uh, 207 meters. And then we also kind of tend uh, to design buildings as a collective hall. So it's not a singular building, but they're kind of interconnected with bridges, again, to foster collaboration, to create physical connections, to build transparent environments. So you can see that the kind of the, the boundary between a building and a city kind of blends together. And then we sort of also realized that these structures that I showed before are much more uh, kind of that their performance is much better compared to the to the basic play that I show you at the very beginning, because you can see the amount of voids that we have kind of again says towards the towards the transparency and and, and collaborative environment. I mean, what we also do that we look into the uh, in, in 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 people's physical behavior, you know, how they circulate what. What's, and, and then basically the colors, they mark, uh, you know, certain intentions of the crowd. So you can throw uh, a, a, a simple kind of uh, analysis of, of people's behavior. You can predict their future behavior. So I'm going to skip that. We also don't exclude ourselves from this. So we also map a behavior of ourselves in the office. So this is, this is there to actually uncover the, the, 
the use of the, uh, of the two coffee machines. So we just wanted to figure out which one is the more popular and why. And uh, maybe that's too long for my time. We actually figure out it's the left one because there is a hot chocolate in it. And you know, so this is how the word is presented to us, right? This is the structure that people, t yeah, but this is how the word works, you know? So actually, how, how, do, we, how do we deal with this? So, you know, study shows that just sitting in, uh, next to a more productive people, a person makes you 15% more productive. Oh, that's interesting. So what if architects kind of turn into a, a dating agency that actually they find out, you know, what are the best matches in the workplace to actually make it productive? So we kind of take this obsession of ga data gathering also into that and be able to kind of provide plates where they provide the most amount of matches and, 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 and deliver very kind of environments that are really tailored to the client. So you can see here that the algorithms are actually searching for the best possible setup according to the kind of dating agency algorithms in, in the background. So, and uh, yeah, and those uh, kind of the collection of the tools that, that I've presented before, they help us also on a, on a much more larger scale, on a, on an urban scale. So we're able to kind of deliver designs of, of whole quarters and whole cities where they're fully integrated, the buildings are all interconnected. They all, s as you can see here, that the, they include, you know, their own circulation. It's uh, obviously, it's, it's, there is a drive towards autonomous circulation. So, uh, and again, some of the principles that I mentioned before, you can see on the designs, the amount of voids inside of the building, the, they actually generate lots of transparency, the, the kind of connectivity to different podia, the kind of different activation of space, those are all the interests that we follow. And I think t together, kind of using all the tools, or some of that that I presented earlier, be able to, uh, to, to reach a certain kind of comprehensive vision for the future. Thank you.